Hey everyone, it's Katie and Elisha from NowThatWe'reAFamily.com and today we are going to be telling you about 10 things that we do to keep our marriage fun. And number one on my list would be Elisha and I both shower every single night. We don't actually shower together, so it's not like that kind of fun. Uh, we both like all the hot water on just one of us at a time, but it makes sure that we are prepared for fun happening later in the night. And uh, more than often, it does. Yeah, Katie and I have never been the shower together couple. We. I covet the hot water in the shower, which she does as well. Easily. So it's always, whenever we've tried that, that's turned into a fight. It's really like not served the purpose that we always think it's gonna serve. So we don't shower together, but we do shower every single night. Number two, we go to bed at the same time. This might seem obvious, but we had been in a rut early on in our marriage where I was working late and then Katie was going to bed before me and we realized this just had an extremely negative effect on our overall love life, our romance, physical intimacy, and then also our emotional togetherness. We weren't able to have those carefree conversations that so often happen when you're in bed at the same time. We weren't able to recap the day and have that thing that we could count on as being this bookend to every day. So now we make a point to every single night climb into bed at the same time. Yeah, and so this kind of can be difficult for both of us because I like to be in bed earlier. Elisha tends to be a little bit more of a night owl than me. And so sometimes we will get in bed at the same time. We will connect, we will have our conversation, we'll do whatever we do. And then Elisha ends up getting up and going upstairs because he has a little bit of a second wind and I just go to sleep, but we were able to start the evening in bed together. And if he's not ready to go to bed quite at that time, then we kind of have come up with a compromise to make it work for both of us. So number three would be thinking of marriage in terms of themes, like life themes rather than life stages. So I think it's really popular in our culture right now to think, okay, the first year or two of your marriage is for you guys traveling around, doing all the fun stuff together, and then you have kids, and then your relationship goes totally on hold and you raise the kids. And then you get the kids raised, maybe back in school or through high school or whatever that season is in your life. And then you reconnect and you think, okay, we have time Time for each other now what are we gonna do what fun are we gonna have now and instead we'd like to think of everything kind of as a big long theme we want little romantic pockets all throughout our marriage we don't want those to go on hold even though we have five little children at this season so for us that might be an overnight camping trip we've done things like we went to a knife fighting conference we've gone to a spy conference where you learn how to be spies, so watch out. Uh, we've done things that are fun and romantic, sprinkled in through these child rearing and bearing years. And I think that that's something that keeps our marriage very fun, keeps us connected. And even if it's not super, super often, limits the scarcity of when we were first married thinking, we have to have all our fun right now before kids come and then it's not gonna be any fun. And then it also keeps you connected so when your kids are out of the house, you already have a lot of momentum, you already love doing things together, you already have a lot of shared experiences and you aren't looking at each other going like, who are you? Number four, and I stole this one from my father-in-law, Chad Johnson, and it has served me well in my years of marriage. And that is simply putting toothpaste on my wife's toothbrush at nighttime before she goes to the bathroom. Tell you what, this one without fail blesses her and in so doing blesses me. Would you say Katie, babe? It's so sweet. It's a funny little 
thing that you might think is trite, but it means that your spouse thought of you. And it is such a, it's something that makes me feel so loved because it makes me know that when Elisha was brushing his teeth, he thought of me. And it goes just as far as if he bought me flowers or wrote me a note or bought me a gift. So, really? Oh yeah. It's the same? Good to know. Something that keeps our marriage fun is staying healthy and attractive for your spouse. This is something that can be easier said than done. We've both gone through slumps. Well, I don't I don't think Elisha's actually gone through slumps. I certainly have. <laughs> I have, though, where I'm just not feeling motivated. And it's always a good reminder to get out of that rut. And when I feel cute or put together, even if I'm going through um you know, pregnancy weight gain or postpartum weight loss or any of those things. It just makes me feel more fresh and flirtatious towards Elisha. It makes me accept his compliments a lot more. I have energy for him in the evenings or energy to hear his thoughts and what he's going through. And so just maintaining health, it's something that I really appreciate Elisha doing for me. And it's something that I really want to do for him as well. Something that's been really fun in our marriage is learning new hobbies or new skills together as a couple. And this means getting outside of our comfort zone together. And so we've done a variety of things and this doesn't mean we're every date night going and going on a new adventure or learning something new or going to a new class. But over the course of what our seven or eight years of marriage, I wrote down a list of things that came to mind and we've, you mentioned going to knife fighting classes. We've trained for a triathlon together. So when we were doing that every date night, we would go for a swim workout or we'd go for a bike ride before we went out to dinner. Um, we did CrossFit together for a season. So before our dates, we'd go to a CrossFit class and we would do that. We did rock climbing early on. We've gone shooting, so we'll go to the shooting range and, sh and shoot guns together. We've gone parasailing, we've gone zip lining, we've done martial arts together. We'll go polar dipping. You know, it's one of those things where if we like had access to a hot tub, we'd go find cold water, jump into the cold water. Uh, and then Katie already also mentioned we went to a spy class one time in Las Vegas. And come to, f it takes more than two days apparently to become, you know, what well, about Jack Ryan or Mitch Rapp or anything like that. But I feel like we got a few practical you know, skills out of that that I served us. The first skill of becoming a spy is, is not to tell people you are one. Yeah. So, so we're not spies. No. <laughs> Whether it's a big thing or a little thing, learning something new together is extremely bonding. It's building your confidence. It's showing the other person that you're willing to get outside your comfort zone with them. If you just stay in your lane that you've always been in and you think, oh man, I just like playing golf. That's my thing. I like golf or you just like whatever, go, you know, art, you just like painting and you just stay there your whole life, then it's not bringing up new conversations and you're not experiencing new things together. So being willing to get outside your comfort zone and experience new things can be extremely beneficial to the marriage. It also brings adrenaline into the relationship. And when you're first dating, you naturally have a lot of that. And so it's really fun to kind of bring a spike of adrenaline into your marriage and get those feelings again of, fear or whatever the emotion is, just a lot of emotion and that's very bonding. Hey you guys, I just wanted to tell you real quick about my homeschooling course, Homeschooling the First Three Years. It's all about laying a foundation of joy and confidence and fun and simplified homeschool in your home. So if you're in a place where maybe you're considering homeschooling your kiddos in the next few years, then this course is for you. It's gonna break down not only what we do for homeschool and our family and what we've done for the first three years in homeschool, but it's also going to show you exactly how that looks. Looks. So I'm going to take a camera around with me vlog style and show you how does it look to homeschool with a baby? How does it look to homeschool with a toddler? How does it look to homeschool multiple grades at one time? How do you navigate um, different learning tendencies? How do you navigate your learning style as a teacher? And how do you motivate children and get them to love learning? I love homeschooling my kids. One of my favorite things that I get to do with them each day. And it's something that I want you to love doing with your children as well well. So if you look down in the description box, you will be able to find a discount code where you can get a discount off of homeschool the first three years. And I really hope that it blesses your home. Okay, so something that makes marriage fun is always agreeing and having a united front in public and then questioning or disagreeing in private after the situation has passed. Maybe when you get in the car and you leave and you go, hey, 
I have a question about what you said in there, or um, I disagreed with what you said or something like that, but in front of the children and in front of anyone else publicly, um, maintaining a unified front, this makes every aspect of marriage a lot more fun <laughs> because you aren't being cut down in public. And this is something that Elisha is so good at and it's something that I want to continue to grow in. It is so culturally accepted to tear your spouse down in public settings or out in public, and that is so counterproductive to your marriage. You're tearing the person down that God has said you're one with, that you together are your are his image bearers. And the Bible talks about marriage and talking about you being one flesh and what man hates his own flesh. And so why would you tear yourself down in front of other people? You know, when you're when you're talking about any topic, and you might think it's playful, you might think it's in jest, but Katie honors me in public and I do all that I can to honor her in public. This does not mean we don't address differences and we don't bring up areas that we disagree in. And if there is something that is said in public that we that we did not appreciate, we address that and we talk about it. But we don't do it in a way that demeans the other person or tears them down in public. And this is when your spouse is there and this is also when your spouse is not there. Speaking about them the same way and just building them up in public, speaking well of them in public, like this isn't something that's prioritized in the world we live in, but frankly, marriage and healthy marriage is not pri prioritized in the world that we live in. Right, something else that Katie and I both prioritize to make our marriage fun and enjoyable is personal hygiene. I mean, Katie talked about taking a shower at nighttime, she talked about staying healthy, but you can go beyond that and get make yourself smell good. You know, I wanna make sure that my deodorant is something that Katie you know, likes to smell. If I'm, if you're using the deodorant you used back in junior high, then you're probably wrong in that area. And so it might be time to evolve, you know, and to get your, keep your spouse interested when she smells you. So I do everything that I can to make sure my hygiene's good, staying clean, having deodorant on, putting on fragrances when I want to really, you know, bring it up to the next level. And then also that goes for the environment of our room, having candles in a room, putting on music, setting the mood in a way where we're both really comfortable, we are relaxing, we like being together in that space. Uh, and so those are a few things that we do to just make being together enjoyable. Something else that makes marriage fun is a little spontaneity. Now, when you have five kids, a little spontaneity goes a very long ways. You guys know that we have a screen-free home and so we don't just, our kids aren't able to watch things. The benefit of this is that if Elisha does turn something on, then they are glued to the screen. So I will say every, I don't know, maybe once a month, maybe once every two months. Again, it doesn't have to be very often. I might be getting ready for church. I might be getting ready for a date. Usually we're about to go somewhere and I'm getting ready for something. And I hear planet Earth start playing upstairs. <laughs> And I know that Elisha's gonna be coming down in a couple minutes. So, you know, being comfortable with, hey, if you were dating, you would totally be, totally be okay with your hair getting messed up and your makeup being messed up and having to touch it up real quick before you rush out the door. But having those little spontaneous moments can really make uh, your marriage just fun and sparky and enjoyable. And I don't know, feel like, feel like you're real young again, <laughs> you know, even when you've got a lot of little kiddos and a lot of demands on your time. That's right. There is no such thing that I'm aware of as bad sex in marriage. You know, it's good. It's good to have sex in marriage, but there are ways to make it more fun and more interesting. And like Katie said, making it spontaneous, if being proactive and making it spontaneous, which almost sounds counterintuitive, but I think that can mean just changing it up, doing it at different times of the day, doing it in different rooms, doing it, you know, just when you're in different moods can be a really fun thing for your marriage. Because like like Katie said, you know, when you were when you were dating, you were just anytime, anywhere, not to have sex, you know, of course, because we waited until we were married for that. But you were willing to just be passionate and have fun with your you know, the significant other in that season. And you want to create that in marriage as well. Was that awkward? Yes. Okay. You can maybe take that out. No, it's funny. Okay. I'll tell you something that's extremely attractive in a spouse, and that is when they study the Bible thoroughly. There is such a difference between when Katie and I are kind of perfunctorily going through the Bible. Is that a word? Holy smokes. <laughs> Maybe going through the Bible in a cursory manner and versus when we're studying it in a deep way, where we're looking up the original 
language, when we're cross-referencing the passages, when we're looking at it from the historical context, and then we bring that to the dinner table conversation, we bring it to date night and we're talking about it, that is pretty attractive and it makes growing in our faith fun and it just makes our overall marriage fun. Studying the Bible in a thorough, intentional way. Something that always makes marriage a win is when you have this mindset of appreciation instead of expectation. I hear about this a lot in the mommy culture space where um, the dad changes the baby's diaper, but it's like, hey, it's expected. It's your kid, right? Change the baby's diaper. Well, okay, yeah, but that doesn't like foster love and enjoyment in a marriage. And so if Elisha changes Lawrence's diaper, which he does all the time, then I am so thankful for that because if he wasn't changing it, I would be changing it. If Elisha takes out the trash every single day, he has ever since we've gotten married, but every time he takes out the trash, I am so thankful he does it because if he didn't do it, again, I would be doing it. And I feel that way when it comes to Elisha. Every time I make a meal, it is so appreciated in our home. And you would think he would just expect that of me, right? I'm home all day, what else am I gonna do with my time? I can make him dinner. But it's just something that I never feel is expected. Um, I feel appreciated for doing the laundry. I feel appreciated every time the house is clean. I feel appreciated every time I do on, like get dressed and put on my makeup to go on a date night. And just having that, that um, atmosphere of appreciation for all those things that could be expectations, makes marriage so much more fun and rewarding. If you think you deserve anything, your whole understanding of God and of theology and you know anthropology is off. You know, if you've got this me-centered philosophy that I deserve anything, you're wrong. We don't deserve a thing. And if you've got a realistic perspective on yourself and then you see any time your spouse chooses to serve you, that should be a humbling thing. It is amazing when you have that perspective in marriage and you think, boy, day in and day out, Katie irons my shirts, she does the laundry, she makes meals, she does so many things I don't even see, she tidies up our bedroom. It is such a gift and it's not hard for me to be so grateful because I know what I deserve and it is no good thing from my wife or from God. And so being in a place of gratitude, like what you said, or of appreciation, and of truly not having this attitude that you're entitled to anything, because we simply are not. It's such a gift. Everything is grace that's undeserved. And act like that. It's just a gift, every single thing we get from our spouse. And it doesn't mean that those expectations can't creep in there, but then you'll start noticing, at least we start noticing, we're a lot more on edge and marriage gets a lot less fun. Self-development books can get a bad rap, but here's the deal. We should be developing ourselves. We should be growing. We should be learning new things and growing in capabilities and expanding our knowledge. And when you're doing this, it makes you far more interesting to your spouse. If you can't find any outside motivation, say, I don't really want to advance my career. I don't want to be healthier. I don't want to make more money. That's all vanity. Then do it for your spouse. Make yourself more interesting to your spouse. Read books, learn new things, listen to podcasts, watch documentaries, go to classes, take classes online. Because when you are constantly learning new things, you're like this well that's got this fresh water that you can then share to your spouse. And when you're stagnant and you're doing the same old, same old, then that's gonna come across to your spouse. And, and when you go on date night, they're not gonna be that interested to ask you questions. You're not gonna have very many interesting things to share with your spouse. Katie is a huge inspiration in this area. She is constantly learning and in all sorts of areas. I can't even put it in a box. She taught, she's learning about health. She's learning about business. She's learning about homeschooling. She's learning about you know, physical fitness. She's constantly learning about new things. And so when we go on a date or when we have a few minutes together to be able to talk, I'm excited. There's that expectation because she's been learning new things and I get to hear about it. And I feel like that's something that Elisha does too. That's something that initially attracted me to him is something that I really valued was a learner and a grower. That was something that I really wanted in a husband. And Elisha is learning and growing every single day and bringing new ideas and concepts to me. And again, that makes marriage fun because when the more you've been married, the beauty is that you do know what each other think about a lot of different things. So it's fun to bring in a new topic, bring in fresh ideas and be able to discuss it and bring that with your spouse. It's just really stimulating and um, brings in, yeah. Fresh content, fresh energy. <laughs> yeah. Just freshness. Fresh, keep it fresh. <laughs> We're almost done here, but clear roles 
are very, very important in marriage. They make marriage a lot more fun when you know what's your responsibility and what your spouse's responsibility is. So Elisha and I base this off of what we see in scripture when it comes to what our roles are. And then for things that are a little more gray, we kind of consider those responsibilities, see who would like to do them the most and divvy those up. And so for us, Elisha is the primary provider in our home. For me, I'm the primary homemaker and child caretaker in our home. Now, is there crossover sometimes? Yes, but I sometimes will help him in his role and he sometimes will help me in my role. Um, but the ultimate responsibility falls on the weight of the person who is caring for that role. And I think that that really helps me when it comes to housework or stuff like that. Elisha helps me all the time, but I feel like I'm in the position of having responsibility for our home. So if something's a wreck, I don't blame him for it. If I need help, I go and I ask him like, hey, would you mind helping me out with this? I need to be bailed out here. Uh, but I'm not being like, this is his responsibility and he's just not seeing the need here. And you know what I'm saying? It keeps me from growing bitter if he's not just jumping up and offering to help, which I mean, usually he does anyways. Yeah, there is no healthy organization on earth that does not have defined and clear roles. That's just how we operate as humans. There's gotta be a hierarchy. There's gotta be a chain of command. And the Bible's given us what that looks like in a marriage with Christ being the head of the husband and the husband being head of the wife and then us being over our children and having dominion over that arena. If we submit to that and then see what that looks like in a practical way, there's so much peace, there's so much unity and there's so much more high functioning uh, living that comes when you actually submit to that hierarchy and then clarify it and then try to grow in that, get better at it. Say, that, okay, this is what we're shooting for. Let's grow in this area. You're the, the, this is where you're at, this is where I'm at. Let's get better at those roles and maximize our potential within those roles. Okay, the last one we're gonna share is we do not do the whole tit for tat keeping score thing, okay? No, you did this, so I'm doing this. Or I remember when you said that. No, that's not how it works. We do this whole 100%, 100% marriage thing. It's not 50-50, it's not keeping score, it's not keeping track of who had a, fun night last week and so I get a fun night this week who cleaned the bathroom last week so I'm doing it this week. No, we are one. We are a family. Katie talked about those domains that we take uh, stewardship of, M mine being the financial provision, Katie's being the, the domain of the home, but we ultimately are one. The Bible says that we are a unit. Our family is a unit. And so we want to view everything through that lens. It's not me pursuing my desires or Katie pursuing her dreams. We are Katie and Elisha. That's the way God has put us together. He's formed us to be together in union in a marriage. And so we want to thrive in that context. So therefore, what are you keeping score of? Either our family's growing together, our marriage is growing, or we're struggling, but we're in it together. Yeah, and this can really lead to not having very optimized or highly functioning marriage and home if you're making decisions based off what the other person did. Like if Elisha spent time with guys one night, well, maybe that's not what I need, you know, like, or what our home needs is for me to just go do the exact same thing and like swap when it comes to that. It's easier to just be like, okay, what does our family need? If you need time away to recharge, that's a blessing for our family. When you come home recharged, what a gift. Let's keep going. Let's keep resuming what the Lord has in front of us. If I need to be recharged, Elisha isn't keeping score. Oh, Katie took four hours this afternoon and I watched the kids. He lovingly helps me recharge. And when I come back, we get back in alignment and we keep moving forward. And so this comes, this covers everything. It covers things from finances to health, to any kind of expenditure that's coming or taking maybe from the family. We have this mindset of instead of you're taking from the family, it's okay, you're refueling for the family. And that way it's a win for both of us. It's a win when I'm refueling, it's a win when he's refueling, we're able to come together and we're able to work really hard as a team. Yes, Re referencing that scripture uh, scripture again that maybe we can put up on the screen. No man hateth his own flesh, but nurtureth it and cherisheth it. So anytime Katie has an opportunity to get away and to recharge or to have some time by herself in the evening, 
That is, according to God's word, a huge win for me. It's a huge win when I'm recharging for Katie because we are now one, we are one flesh. And so when you start thinking that way and you realize this is not 50-50 or your thing and my thing, this is our thing, we are one, then you can really start supporting the other person and doing what's best for them because you realize it's best for the marriage. There you have it. I don't even know how many we gave. We said it was gonna be 10, but I think we might have gone over, who knows? Things that keep marriage fun. Keep this in mind. If you have this mindset of it keeps getting better because we get better at being married, it makes the future of being married to someone for 60 years a lot more exciting than you think, oh, the infatuation stage is behind us or you know, the stage when we didn't have kids is behind us. Instead, we're able to be like, wow, we weren't very good at marriage back then. We didn't know each other very well. We get to continue growing and learning and building a marriage that is incredible and God glorifying and hopefully edifying to those around us as well. So it's bigger and brighter, even though we do go through slumps and having that perspective. I mean, hey, put that down too. That keeps the marriage fun bonus. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that as well. We would love to have you here for every Thursday's video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.